Queensland, you see Gabriel Medina making his way out in the water, actually there, just getting into the zone up against Joel Parkinson. The stage is set. What an amazing final I think we are going to have on our hands, Ronnie. Oh, this is huge. Gabriel Medina is the first goofy footer to crack the final since Mick Lowe took the event out. That was way back in 2004, so that's an incredible achievement in itself. But up against Joel Parkinson, he'll have to bring his aim ga A game. We just saw Joel top the highest scoring ride list, top the highest heat score list for the event so far. The guy is on fire. We noticed on the run down to the lineup, Gabrielle going through the crowd. Joel, he went the back door. He went over the hill. He wanted a nice secret exit, and uh, he's going to jump off the rock shortly. Yeah, as you pointed out, Joel dropping a 9.93, and the boys in the booth were talking about basically Joel just looking like he was free surfing out there. And what a crowd we have on hand here just after 5.20 p.m. on Tuesday. So not much being done here in Coolangatta for the finals here during the Quicksilver Pro. Not much work getting done out there, is there? This is uh, a Tuesday afternoon. Obviously, we're running pretty late this afternoon, but here is Gabriel Medina on his road to this final clash. Yeah, he, as you pointed out, he was the informed goofy footer all the way through, and, well, he's going to have his work cut out against Joel Parkinson but with big moves like that. We know that Gabby is known for his big air maneuvers, but I tell you what, he can definitely get up into the pocket and push the tail up and over, and that's what has got him into the finals. The condition's still very clean out there, and I tell you what, Gabby is going to be a force to be reckoned with up against Joel, but Joel's won this event in the past. It's going to be a tough one, Ronnie. Yeah, Gabrielle, he had a, a tough draw with Mick Fanning. He managed to uh, get a wave under Mick's priority to earn his spot in the semi-finals where he came up against Taj Burrow and Taj. He looked deadly throughout the contest. But Gabrielle, again, just maintained composure and in the final stages managed to get a score and get the jump on TV. And I think the difference between him and the other goofy footers, as you pointed out you know, earlier, Ronnie, is he really applied pressure to his tail when he got up into the lip as opposed to doing what we refer to as the windshield wipers and just throwing the board up. He pushes through those maneuvers, and that's the difference when you see those scores go onto the board. Well, he's got an incredible amount of variety on his back and he's able to throw the tail, he can throw his board in reverse, he can do big airs, but he's also got a really nice backhand carve. And that's what you need if you're going to match it with the likes of Joel Parkinson, Mick Fanning and Taj Burrow. And you talked about Joel Parkinson posting a 9.93 in that semifinal. Well, Gabriel Medina has a 9.40 as well in his scoreline. And this was Joel heading out for the final, as you said. He backdoored the crowd. They were waiting for him over here in the competitor's area to see him come down. And using his local knowledge, he avoided all of that and went into his zone. And now he's making his way out into his local break. Joel Parkinson just breezing through to this final with some really solid performances throughout. He never dropped the heat. Same was the case for Gabriel Medina. But Joel, he never really had to get his back against the wall. He just came out strong in the opening stages of all his exchanges and laid down big heat score totals. Well, and the thing about Joel that I, I kind of look at Steph as well, you know, Steph didn't peak until the final, and Joel seems to be peaking now as well, as we just saw his best scores posted in that semifinal, and he's really got a knack for the barrel out here. Obviously, it's his local break. He knows how to read the refraction coming off the rocks here at Snapper Rocks, and he chose the waves well and got some beautiful tube rides. Three times Joel Parkinson has broken into the six-point range or higher for his combined heat score totals and as you can see he is just on fine equipment no catching of the rails typically smooth but also throwing down some big explosive maneuvers but he's barrel riding out there behind the rock those tricky backwash wash sections he just reads them so well well, and it's interesting, too. Before the event started, we talked to Joel, and he said, hey, the bank right now, guys, is a 9 out of a 10. And we're starting to see that now as the swell has dropped a little bit. The conditions has really cleaned up. I tell you what, hats off to the commissioner here in Perot. We've been relying on Coastal Watch to give us the forecast for the event, but I think Joel's summaries of the conditions each morning after a free surf have been spot on. It just goes to show how well he knows this break. And he's never looked out of sorts out there in the lineup. He's never really lost or looked struggled in the tricky conditions. He's always found the two best waves in every Haiti serve and converted them into monster scores. Well, we know home court advantage is huge when it comes to football and basketball. Will it come into play here in the finals? The crowd goes nuts, guys. Joel, Joel Parkinson up against Gabriel Medina. You guys up in the booth, Potts, Joe, take it away. Thanks a lot, Todd and Ronnie, for the heavy road to the final as we see this clash come to life. Gabriel Medina representing the Goofy Foot side of things and Joel Parkinson representing a lot of titles under his name going back to 2002 when he defeated a Goofy Foot, Corey Lopez, in his first win on his home court. 
Potts looking into this matchup. We've seen it happen in the past where Medina's taken maybe the bigger titles, that big final in San Francisco, and another final series event the previous season. But now it's a brand new year. 35 minutes on the clock, scored on their top two. How do you think the opening exchange is going to go down? Well, you know, I think Joel's going to want to start uh, this final just the way he started the semifinals. You know, he's got a strategy going. Todd uh, made mention of the fact that he's peaking at the right time. He's saving his best for last. Gabriel Medina's had to pull the rabbit out of the hat quite a few times. He's had those really tough battles. Is that going to fatigue him here in the final? He's up against one of the best surfers out here at Snapper, Joel Parkinson. I think Gabriel Medina's got a really tough battle on his hands. Pretty interesting as you see this matchup on paper. Already a few minutes off the clock here as Parko is sitting deep behind the rocks. We are waiting to establish priority. No one has priority yet. And Joel is always one that likes to control the start of every single matchup, especially at right-hand dominant point breaks. Yeah, you know, Joel's going to sit He's going to sit right up behind the rock, and that's what he's. Uh, that's where he's been finding these uh, nice long tube rides to get things going. There's the matchups between uh, Gabriel Medina and Joel Parkinson, three apiece. So even Stevens going into this final, Joel's just going to play a nice cruisy game here to start things off. He's looking for those nice hollow right-handers that have been coming from behind the rock. Gabriel Medina sitting just down the line a little bit, so Joel having his own way with the lineup at the moment. As we remember the last matchup that Parco and Medina had, a semi-final matchup in Portugal where Medina won, went on to the final to finish runner-up in that event. Parco is going to take the first wave of the final, packs the pit, just like in his semi-final, makes it out. There comes a car, and now off the bottom, wrapping cut back into the pocket with a clean rebound, waiting for the wave to grow. Here goes Parkinson, nice knife off the top, driving off the bottom. Filling it off the top again. Late hit on the closeout. And stomps it. Well, there you go. The question was going to be asked, how's Joel going to attack this final exactly the same way as he opened up in that semi-final? Um, just a beautiful way to start. Nice tube right behind the rock there. You know, Gabriel Medina's going to find it hard because he's sitting down the line a little bit. For him to start challenging uh, Joel Parkinson's scores, he's going to have to move up the line a little bit and start getting himself in that critical point of the wave. Interesting start here with priority handed to Gabriel Medina now. Medina not going to wait too long. Drifts the tail on his first re-entry. Off the bottom, a little carve down to the bottom. Lips showing up for Medina. Tags it. Picks up some speed to try to cover some ground. Whitewater's holding him back a little bit further. Still hanging in there. Medina will keep swinging. Down to the bottom. Off the top, a big powerful vertical snap for Gabriel. Little jam down to the inside and loses the finish as you see his dad standing by rooting him on. Parkinson way out the back. He'll regain priority with 31 to go. Yeah, you know, golden time here on the Gold Coast. The sun is setting on what has been an unbelievable day of competition. Joel Parkinson opening up with a beautiful wave as uh, we have a look at uh, those two opening rides from uh, these uh, informed competitors. Joel Parkinson taking off behind the rock. You see that bit of a lump on the wave there. Tucks into the nice little barrel there. Great way to start. And uh, this is where Joel starts opening up. Finds that beautiful open face turn. And nice wraparound cutback. So Joel just tagging this one. Picking up where he left off in semi-finals action. Another nice open face turn. Joel Parkinson got it on a string here in the finals. And finishes off with a nice little maneuver there. So Joel Parkinson opening up with a great scoring ride. And building his momentum, what are the judges going to like out of this way, Potts? You know, just the beginning of it. Nice critical there, pulls up into the tube and disappears. Rides on the foam ball, comes out nice and clean. Judges are going to like that, but this is where I think the bulk of the scoring points are going to be on this open face here. Just nice maneuvers, bringing it back into the power source, waiting for it to build up on the inside, and right there, just jamming those fins in. Joel Parkinson tags it again and finishes off with a nice close out re-entry great way to start the final well he's been building on finals day joel parkinson was uh, pretty vocal sharing that he wanted to finish this contest today looking at the conditions he always knows what the swell's doing in his backyard and looks like they filled it in quite well parko and medina didn't have to surf in that extra heat today and looks like both of them still have a ton of energy to do battle in this final yeah joel starting off with the bang and you know just picking picking up where he left off the crowd's clapping you know why joey 9.0 on his opening ride. You see wife Monica and uh, Wes Berg there just loving this action here in the finals as we see Gabriel Medina. You know, he's been doing that this entire event, just opening up with an incredibly radical first move. 
carving back into the power source. Snapping off the top again there, just planting that back foot, getting that spray flying through the air. This is where he kind of got caught behind the section just a little bit. The judges aren't going to like that, but back on on the open face. Nice vertical surf in there, which has been serving Medina really well through this event and finishes off with another nice backside maneuver. So Gabriel Medina answering back with a 6-1-7, but Joel's nine-point right. What a way to start, Joey. Marco takes the lead on his home court, and Medina just needs a 2.84 to take the lead off him. Joel has priority at this point. As we mentioned, the, the peaking Joel Parkinson on finals, they had a 13.94 total in his non-elimination round. Grew that to the 17 range in his quarterfinal over Pupo, again, to take him out of the contest. Then in the 18s against against Adrian D'Souza. Now, let's see what he can do in the final. Let's get an update on the conditions with Peter Mel sitting in the lineup. Yeah, thank you very much. In the uh, beginning of that heat, we saw Joel Parkinson go way up top. And again, that's exactly where he feels the most comfortable is behind the rocks. You know, with this tide, we're about an hour after high tide, and we're going to start to see it drain a little bit. Uh, of course, Joel probably picking up on that, knowing that there's going to be a few more waves behind the rock. And he sat there, waited for the one to come, and got it. He was so small. He, I mean, he literally, the barrel was quite small. And he, and he stayed right in the right perfect spot, didn't let it touch him and as it just opened up. And, uh, you know, these, these guys are quite amazing. Um, you know, but then again, Gabriel Medina, he's also just as amazing. So it's a good final already start. Thanks a lot, Pete. As we look at the vision that Peter Mel was looking at in the channel out here at Snapper Rocks, a vision that Parco gets to see more often than not on his home court. It's kind of interesting, though, Potts, when Parco got here, he's kind of mentioning that it gets pretty crowded out here at Snapper Rocks. So on the weekends, he sometimes has to avoid this spot. You know, one of his favorite waves in the world. During the week, he'll sneak out there, especially when the waves pick up and it gets really challenging, like six foot plus behind the rock. Then he shows up. Doesn't matter if it's the weekend or not, because he's the guy that's first in line when the bombs come in. Absolutely right, Joey. This, you know, it's a very scary wave uh, where Joel Parkinson's sitting. It's, it's a wave of consequence. You mistime that takeoff, you hit the backwash, you could end up on the rocks. And a lot of people know that. Once this wave gets up to six foot, it is a wave of consequence, and that's when Parko excels. Right now, Medina does not have priority. He's going to change it up and look at a wave. Now holding back at the 6-1-7 opener and just needs a 2-8-4 to turn it at the moment. Medina has beaten Parco in the most critical heats they've had recently, including that major win back in San Francisco. Like they're talking about on the desk with Todd and, and Blakey, they mentioned how it, you know, he's kind of the air specialist. And we remember the final with Joel Parkinson. He adapted to the conditions at the beach break and he went down to turns for that win. Yeah, you know, Gabriel Medina, he's evolving as a competitive surfer. I like what I'm seeing in this event from Gabriel Medina. We haven't seen any of those big flaring backside aerial maneuvers that he's so well known for. Instead, he's sticking to the face of the wave, and here he goes. Looking for a 2-8-4. First snap off the top should get him there. Back up the top again with a big blast. Floats the third maneuver, and now running down the line. Nice invert as he squares up again. Remember, without priorities, he goes down to the bottom. Off the top, clean blast for Medina, and he's starting to work his way through the inside corner. Already calling for the ski, and we'll have a lead change. What a great way to answer back from Gable Medina, you know, giving uh, Joel a little bit of medicine back there, picking that wave up under Joel's priority. And, uh, you know, Medina and Joel are sitting in two different parts of the bank. Joel's sitting further up behind the rock. Medina's sitting further down where he's been you know, using those little wide ones to his advantage, been posting big scores. And I tell you what, let's have a look at this one here and finds a little gem. He opens up with that trademark backside maneuver and starts getting going here. He's so good at finding that rhythm, getting that momentum, beautiful foam climb there to get that speed and tags it again there. Nice vertical surfing for Gabriel Medina. This is what's been getting him through heats, taking down some big names, Mick Fanning, Taj Burrow, and he's got another one to deal with right now in Joel Parkinson. So just cruising his way out of a big finish as we anticipate a pretty decent number out the back, getting some white water on his back as Joel Parkinson controls the takeoff. Quick rip to the pocket on the car, floats the next section, deep bottom turn to wrap combo, and now Parko running through a bit of foam on the face. He still snaps it high off the top, drives off the bottom and drills the next section. Here comes the wrap combo for Parko to try to get his lead back. He's starting to stall. He's done a lot of big moves on this section throughout this past week. Just a little setup work, timing the finish, late hit, closes it out. 
beautifully on the inside corner. Already has a nine. That'll serve as his backup with 24 to go. Legs are burning right there, Joey. That's for sure. These guys have been surfing all day. You know, the fittest will survive out here at Snapper. It's a wave that demands a lot of physical uh, ability, as we see Joel. A nice, late, critical takeoff. And that puts him in such a good position. And that's what we find with Joel Parkinson. You know, he's look at this transition from the bottom to the top of the wave. He is one of the best at it out here at Snapper Rocks. And uh, just fitting his maneuvers in. He lets the wave dictate what is going to happen. And, uh, you know, just tagging it as he moves down the line. This is where it starts getting kind of tricky, but tra traverses back, wait, you see him stand on the tail, wait for this wave to build up on the inside, and then goes to town again, finishing off with a couple of nice turns. So Joel Parkinson backing up that nine with another good score. It's down to 23 minutes on the final as we have the seven come in for the previous of Medina. Medina jumped into the lead, but with that last wave, Parker only needed a 4.17. Gabriel already dropped off out the back. We'll have first priority for the next exchange as we look to that road to the final. We remember back to the first and third round performances from Joel Parkinson. He wasn't in our top five highlight reel kind of secretly advanced through those early rounds. It's kind of the way you want to go, I think. Um, we saw Steph Gilmore, the underdog, and look what happened with her. She came out with the victory here. So, you know, it takes that pressure off. You know, if, you, if everyone's constantly talking about how good you've been surfing and you're the one to win and the odds on favor and all that kind of stuff, it, it, it just adds that pressure. As we see Joel here, just that late takeoff. And, and you know, the positioning is what, is, is what makes Joel so impressive out here at Snapper Rocks. Uh, fades off the bottom you know his his positioning allows him those big turns there and to maximize scoring potential it's not going to be up in that excellent range but it is an absolute cracker for a backup as we see that crazy takeoff out the back and he's still able to commit to this inside corner it's a 683 from the panel for Joel Parkinson as now Medina's back in second needing an 884 as we look out the back to see another little grinder off the rocks it's pretty shallow out the back Medina has priority wearing the red jersey and it looks like Parco had an attempt and he has a broken board in the final so he's going to signal to the beach to get his backup from JS. Wow well Gabriel Medina had priority Joel P Parkinson took off on a wave and we see Wes Berg tell you what he's got to run some uh, Joel Parkinson will be making his way to the keyhole which is where Wes Berg will be meeting him with that backup board Joel pulling into the barrel there really deep behind the rock and we're talking about it's a wave of consequence um, we're just happy that it's Joel's board and not his body so a crazy situation here with Wes Berg running down I guess if you could have anyone sprint to the <laughs> wa water with your backup it should be Wes an all-time Ironman that uh, was been training with Joel Parkinson the last couple of seasons to get him into this tip-top form young Gromit grabs half of Parko's last board as Joel's gonna wait for Wes to get out to the rock and we'll see him back out there in a couple of minutes let's see what happened on that last attempt yeah well look where he is surfing a different part of the bank and the backwash got him we're talking about that backwash there that was just incredible he was so deep on that wave not many people have the guts to do this what Joel's doing takes off pulls into the barrel absolutely perfect it was the backwash that got him and um, you see the rocks right there he must have just missed those rocks crazy stuff there from Joel Parkinson flicks the uh, wax to Westberg and we'll be back out in the lineup in no time at all. A pretty heavy takedown from Parko as he's so comfortable skipping his way off the rocks and he should be back out there in just a moment. And this guy does his jump better than anyone. He jokes about his old jumps where he used to fall up the coast. Right now he's checking himself. Uh, he obviously hit something, quite possibly those rocks. And you know, this is not a bad thing right now for Joel, just to take a breath, regather his thoughts, checks the time. Okay, I've got a nine point right. I've got a backup of a six. Medina needs an 8.84. Just relax, take your time. Make sure you get off the rocks. Don't rush it, because this is where he could come unstuck. He's already hurt himself, as you saw him checking his knee. And I reckon it's a great thing right now for him just to regather his thoughts and make his way out there without uh, any incident. Well, the good part for Joel, watch the jump. Perfect oh. execution. He still has the lead, and Medina. That still scares me, that jump. <laughs> <laughs> pretty wild. He just went down, broke his board, and he's fighting through a pretty turbulent lineup, a pretty serious current throughout most of the day today. How's the drift looking for you right now, Potts? Yeah, you know, there is a bit of a wash coming down the point. Joel was lucky to get through that one. See, once you get off the rocks, you're still not out. If there's another wave coming, it's so easy to get washed back up onto those rocks. But, you know, Joel's super fit, knows his place like the back of his hand, and 
makes his way back out. Gabby looks over to say, you OK, buddy? Yep. And he's going, wow, that was a crazy barrel. That backwash just uh, really, you know, making Joel come unstuck. And lucky to get far enough along there to miss those rocks, Joey. That was a crazy close call there for him. Well, and for losing a board, and now Parco showing Medina what happened on that last attempt. So anything, everything went in Parco's favor to get back to the lineup. Medina still holding priority, but he wasn't able to take advantage of him being by himself in the lineup. 19 left on the clock. Medina uses priority now. Sets up this big bottom turn. First slam perfectly in the pocket. Vertical on the next attempt off the top, and now he's running after some open face. He's pretty deep. Still taking that low center of gravity. Pumping, pumping, and trying to drive out in front, but this one's going to keep him behind. Yes, well, is that a bit of a mistake there for Gabriel Medina? You know, there comes a time on the wave, Joe. Beautiful shot there as we see all the crowds still hanging around. It is uh, quite biblical as the sun is setting here on the Gold Coast. And uh, we've already got one uh, Cooley kid and Stephanie Gilmore as a champ. Can Joel Parkinson make it the daily double? But, you know, Medina there, he's got to make a decision at a certain point whether to try and fit one more vertical turn in or get that speed down the line and capitalize on that inside section, which has been serving him really well through the day. So there's a fine line there between trying to fit those vertical turns in and get that down the line speed. Now 18 on the clock. The only time Parco hasn't converted in a final on his home court was just last year. Kira, when he finished runner up to Kelly Slater. Right now, Medina is still chasing an 884 to try to make a comeback. He has a 7 and a 617. Now it's driving down the line is Joel Parkinson. Carves back into the pocket, picking up the pace off the bottom. Connects with the lip. There's plenty of room. Big float connection. Holds the bottom turn. Nice for a high line climb. And he'll be back out in front. Crowd's loving it as he jams a little layback cutty. Slows himself down. He'll fade. Usually just setting up the ski, but sometimes this little inside section comes to life. Yeah, it does. And I'll tell you what, that backup board doesn't look too bad, does it? Um, obviously, JS has got a, a nice crew of boards for Joel. And uh, these guys are, are well tested their backups and the backup for the backup. You know, they've got a, <laughs> you know, Joel's probably got about 20 boards for this event. And, um, you know, he just cherry picks the good ones and makes sure that, uh, you know, he's got some good boards to back up the, the ones that he's actually going to use. So that one looks like it's going pretty good. So Joel Parkinson on the ski and on his way back out. Let's have a look at the replay here. Just the best at it, isn't he? Um, just that late drop under the lip and then out on the open face. You know, he's got he's got an injury. He's broken his uh, his first choice in boards, but this one's looking really good. Look at that, just tags it, beautiful. Keep it that down the line speed, which, which Medina's not doing. See how he's climbing up over the white water, but keeping that down the line momentum, whereas Gabriel's going more vertical, losing that momentum, which is keeping him behind the section. Joel Parkinson there, just a little slash turn on to finish that one off, and he'll get back on the ski. So is he going to replace that 6.83? We'll have to wait and see. 16.30 now on the clock as the final continues. Parkinson leading over Gabriel Medina. Medina now needing an 8.84. Takes off on a solid one out the back. Reaches for the sky on that first top turn. Lands it. Kicks out quickly to regain priority. A shorter ride and a smart move for Medina to get out of there. Yeah, you saw how difficult that was for Gabriel. You know, he, he, he kind of got caught. He wanted to get in the barrel. You see Dad there nervously looking on. Very emotional after that semifinal uh, against Taj Burrow came down to the, the wire. Let's have a look on your backhand. You see him trying to grab the rail, but super hard on your backhand to pull it up under the lip there and deciding to go for a nice backside tag, but that wave not offering too much. So Gabriel kicking out. Smart move there before Joel got off the ski, maintaining priority. Such a heavy takeoff that Joel Parkinson has wired on his home court. They talked about how tough it is to pull that off as a goofy footer with your back to the wall, especially with the backwash that we saw take out Parkinson that ended up taking out his go-to board in this one. Yeah, it's super tricky. And as that tide starts going out, we're going to see that backwash accentuate. You know, we see the crowd are in knee-deep water enjoying the action here. The finals of the 2014 Quicksilver Pro. It is insane surfing through this event, and it's only getting better. Yeah, pretty hard to believe this is the last heat we'll see this year at the Quicksilver Pro. And Joel Parkinson is right where he wants to be in the final. Gabe and Joel will lead the ratings at the start of the year as they head into Margaret River as the CT's upgraded, but a maxed out crowd. A lot of fans on the side of Joel, but we're hearing a lot of cheers for Medina, especially when he came from behind against Taj Burrow to make this heat. 
Yeah, a lot of support here for the Brazilians. Um, you know, we always call it, we call it Rainbow de Janeiro. Uh, <laughs> a lot of Brazilian support here, and they all come down for this event. You know, it's a, it's a good holiday for them. It's nice warm weather. There's plenty of waves on offer. And, uh, you know, the Brazilians always shine here. You know, uh, D'Souza has uh, a good showing here. We saw uh, Miguel Pupo surfing incredibly well and Gabriel Medina in the finals. The first goofy footer in the finals since 20, 2004, uh, where uh, Mick Lowe took it out. So, insane stuff. Can he go all the way? He's got a big score that he needs a 9.27 to get himself back in the, in the lead, but... Uh, it's uh, plenty of time on the clock, Joey. Well, Potts, we remember back when Parco started off with a big win at the season opener here on his home court when he beat Adriano D'Souza. It was a big year for Joel. He ended up turning in three wins that year, and it was a big heartbreaker for him because he lost at the end of the season. He had that bit of an injury coming into the final stretch, and Mick Fanning snuck out from under him and stole the world title from him. It was a hard one for him to recover from in 2010 as we see Medina now up, getting a carve off the top. And now looking for a little backside roundhouse, just a little down carve. Nothing happening on the inside. Yeah, you know, Medina, he needed some something a little bit more dynamic on the outside. He needed that big vertical snap. He needed some critical surfing to answer back to Joel's nine. Parco out the back, stops the late takeoff, packs the pit, still driving, and he finds a way to pop out. Stands tall, now reaches off the bottom. Monica loving it. Now he's going out in front. There's the carve back into the inside section. Clean inside track, drives down to the bottom. A lot of flow and speed into this inside. It'll slow down with the wave and just sticks into the power source, waiting for a finish from Joel Parkinson. Already a lot of great moves out the back, <laughs> looking to better a 727 bot. Yeah, those legs are burning. He's got to be tired. It's been a long day for Joel. Still got a smile on his face, though. He's loving it out here. He's at home in front of his home crowd. Gabriel Medina up and riding out the back. Trying to get the momentum back on his side as he's going to go through the whitewater. He's got another whitewater section to deal with. Plenty open wall. Reaches off the bottom, but waiting for something dynamic here. Now nice and firm as he's starting to get the wheels turning. Tags it again off the top. Beautiful snap. Gabriel wraps it back in the pocket. A little bit of warble on the open face, so he'll get out of there. Yeah, it was a nice way for Gabriel Medina. Um, you know, he's carrying a 7 and a 6.17, but he needs a wave in that excellent range. If he's going to challenge Joel for this title, he needs something spectacular. You know, we might even need to see Gabriel Medina do that above the air, above the lip surfing. Uh, Joey, the stuff we haven't seen him do this entire event, he's stuck to the face of the wave. He's proved to the world that he's not only a, an air surfer. Beautiful air drop there from Joel Parkinson. Critical stuff. We, we kind of wrote him off. We thought he wasn't going to come out of that, but just showing um, how good he is out here at Snapper Rocks and uh, opens up with some beautiful surfing out on the open face. Just trademark surfing from Joel Parkinson and looking to better that 7.27. But how critical was that uh, free fall drop to tube? See the wave hits that backwash, stands up, and that's what makes this wave so special. The wave sort of closes out on him and instead of giving up, Joel fights his way out. Great stuff there from Joel Parkinson. Well, we see how the takeoff sets up the entire wave, especially out here at Snapper Rocks. It's actually an airdrop as he's just planting it off the top, landing with a tough impact in the flat spots to pack the two. Yeah, you know, and just capitalizing on the end here. That's what the difference has been with Joel Parkinson. You know, he's, he's not only managed to stick the, that late drop into the barrel combo, but he's come out and he's literally tagged that wave all the way through and capitalized on the scoring potential. And then Gabriel Medina on the answer back. Yeah, well, this is a better start for Gabriel Medina. He got some, a couple of good turns out the back and then set up this inside section. You can see him just waiting for it to hit that inside little Marley rock section. A little bit of a bump on the face there, almost lost it. But this is where the scoring comes in. Bang, nice vertical turn there and snaps it off the top again. This is what's been scoring good for Gabriel Medina through this event. So a good answer back for him. That's going to be probably his high scoring ride. Scores developing. Medina needs a 9-2-7 to come back against Joel Parkinson. Parco has first priority as we hit the 10 minute mark. As we toss it out to the lineup with Peter Mel. How'd that wipeout look for you from Joel Parkinson, Pete? Hey, sorry guys. Uh, just wanted to check in with you again out here in the lineup. 
You know, when we were watching earlier and Joel Parkinson jumped off the rocks, if you could actually pan over there, Sam, and check out, there's a reef that runs off the top of the, of the point there. And when he jumps off, he hides behind that reef and it actually has a little back eddy and he could actually hold himself back there. And I've seen it done by a lot of the guys especially Joel Parkinson, the local boys. And then when we see him in the barrel, one of the things he likes to do is he'll ride the barrel and at the very end, when it starts to pinch, he'll actually go to the low road and stay low in the barrel. And what it helps him do is it pushes him out the bottom. Seen him do it several times just during this heat and all the time on those free surfs. So Joel Parkinson, that local knowledge playing a big part of this win right now. Thanks, Pete. We were wondering what he was doing in there when that barrel starts to clamp down on him, actually making a directional change in a tight spot in the tube. Pretty magical to watch, Potts. Yeah, you know, it's just, it, it's incredible wave knowledge. That's what it comes down to. And, you know, Pete was saying earlier that, uh, you know, in an earlier barrel that he got, you know, he kind of tucks himself up into a ball, which makes it a little bit harder for the wave to knock him off the board. So, you know, compressing his body, putting his, all his limbs uh, together, you know, taking that low road and it squeezes him out the bottom. So incredible wave knowledge from Joel Parkinson. Now the moment for Medina to try to fight back to take the first win of the season. We've seen Medina in some big finals in the past. Last year he was injured at this stop and so he answers back big time in 2014. He even dealt with a little injury at the end of the Hawaiian season. And you always wonder when you should take a break from surfing. A lot of critics were thinking Medina was surfing through injury last year when he maybe should have been resting up like John John was doing. You know, everyone's different. You know, I thought maybe he's, uh, you know, keeping the body moving, keeping the, you know, the blood flowing through the, through his foot. You know, you heard his foot at Bell's Beach, but I uh, sorry, here in a, in a, it was in a expression session, I think it was. So, you know, Medina deciding to surf through that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, he still managed to uh, post some results, but, um, you know, very tricky situation and you've got to listen to your body and you know he obviously felt good enough to keep going and definitely one of the most exciting surfers to come on the top stage when you look back since Parker went in 02 we haven't had a Brazilian champ here at the Quicksilver Pro we've had a couple final appearances with now Medina joining Adriano D'Souza D'Souza finished runner up in this event a couple of times in the last few years paddling into this one now Medina needs a 927 gets the lip in the face he's still going to fight through it slams it off the top deep bottom turn nice and vert as he gets a little bit bobbled up regains composure to slam it harder on that next point and there's the finish wow wow nice wave there joel parkinson had priority but you saw medina make a move you know he said look joel's got priority i'm not going to sit where he is it's such a critical section of the wave he moved down the point picked up a, a beautiful little what we call a chip shot. Now what that is, it's a, it's a wave that's smaller on the takeoff and tends to grow as it comes around the point. Here we see Joel having a look at this. And he's going, he's deep, packing the first section. He's got a long way to go to make this out, but he's uh, gonna get taken out by the lip. And whenever Parco pulls in deep, you wanna keep an eye on him. He already broke one board in this final from making that effort. That one slows him down. But he's still out the back to regain priority. Yeah, no harm, no foul. You know, Joel pulled into that one. I think that was a bit of a Hail Mary. It was almost like if he came out of that one, he could probably come into the beach, you know. It would have been a 10-point ride. But Gabriel Medina trying to answer back, trying to keep that momentum going. And you know what he's doing right now, Joey? He's paddling back out. He's doing that exactly what he did against Taj Burrow, paddling back out, quite possibly finding something special on the inside. Turning around without priority, we'll have Medina just take a look at this way. He's done some of his best surfing down the line. Already has snapped a float combo. Filling in the gaps well. Speed turn through the whitewash and now off the lip with a beautiful turn. Cracks it high and hard with that vertical snap. It's bowling on the inside. The lip line, the float. And whenever he stands tall like this, Medina's starting to feel the momentum. Um, yes, he is. And uh, why? Because he just posted an 8.5 on the previous wave. And that's why he paddled back out. You know, he got that. He beat Taj Burrow by doing exactly what he's doing right now. You know, finding those little ones that miss the outside, and they end up growing down through the inside here. So 8.5, which meant, Joey, he needed a 7.87. 7.78, I beg your pardon, with five and a half on the clock. He is back in his heat. A big moment in this heat with 5.30 to go. And, you know, the focus from Joel is surfing behind the rock with that was waters going inside out. Medina's choosing a different part of the bank to get his scores. Well, a lot cleaner on the face of the wave where Gabriel's deciding to surf. Nice floater there, throws it up through the lip, and you know, this wave's starting to hit the bank. Medina's starting to open up. This is where he beat Taj Burrow. 
races down the line, floats it, loses balance, but regains there. So this is going to be an interesting situation. He likes it. He's looking for a 7.78. Let's have another look. A late takeoff. And as we said before, this wave was further down the line. Joel didn't even see this wave. Floats it up over the section, bangs it up through the lip. Now, this is where it gets interesting here for Medina. Snaps it off the top. <laughs> nice vertical turn there for Medina and finishes off with a floater. So an interesting situation here. It's in the judges' hands. Well, we have a big part of the bank here as we check out that replay from the reaction of Medina asking the judges what more do they want him to do to beg a lead change. Do you mind him surfing this part of the bank? Is it just as critical and offering enough scoring potential as, you know, comparing to Joel Parkinson's take surfing behind the rock? Well, it has in the past. I mean, he's won heats by doing exactly what he's doing right now. Um, you know, he was playing Joel's game in the in the first part of this heat. He was sitting up next to Joel near the rocks, you know, that backwash affecting him. He's decided to catch a couple on the inside here, 8.50, and we're still waiting for that last wave to be locked in. So an interesting situation here. Um, it is going to be close. A big decision from the panel with another score dropping in for Gabriel Medina. 350 on the clock as Joel Parkinson still holds priority. We're starting to run out of time. The number's dropping. Medina needs a 778. It's a 783. A lead change in wow. the final. Medina takes the lead. Joel Parkinson to second. And the crowd goes crazy. Well, you were asking me, Joey, is he doing the right thing? Well, he's listening to someone. Someone's guiding him right now and has guided him into two gems, an 8.5 and 7.83. Now, the sense of urgency from Joel Parkinson. Three minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Joel needing a 7.33. A wave approach in the lineup. Here he goes. Parker with priority, drops in late, super deep on the foam ball. Still driving and he gets clipped. Doesn't make it out and he goes down on a wave that definitely would have been the score. Oh my goodness. Well, exciting stuff here at Snapper Rocks. What a way to start the year. Gabriel Medina now with priority. And what he's doing is he's not he's not trying to catch a wave. He is trying to come down and sit right next to Joel. Make sure Joel doesn't sneak anything in. You can see Gabriel Medina making his way down to that inside section. Gabriel's dad, nervous as. We haven't seen him smile all day. It's been a heavy day for the Medina camp. A lot of come from behind victories. This would be one of the biggest comebacks we've seen in a long time. Parco with a stranglehold at the start with a nine point ride. Backed it up with a 7-2-7 after that. And with the momentum he's had on finals day, everything's been going in favor of the local boy. Medina doesn't mind coming from behind. And now he's setting himself up with priority a little bit underneath Parco. And we'll see how he's effective with priority and when blocking could come into play with two minutes to go. Well, a big set coming through out the back. Joel Parkinson having a look at it. Gabriel Medina with priority. Joel's going to make have a look at it. He's going to make Gabriel think about this. Medina doesn't flinch, so it's just going to be Parco trying to create a 7-3-3. He already has a little whitewater coming off the top. Layback jam. He's a surfer well on the inside to make it count. Climbs through the open face. Rapid cutback, and this wave's starting to move. Deep bottom turn. Parco hits the lip. Nice and tight. More section. Climbs it, but he loses it on the finish. A minute 30 to go, and he needed a 7-3-3 with that one. Oh, my goodness. I think a little bit of fatigue maybe there. I think Joel Marta looked a little like his legs were burning for sure. Bit of pressure. And uh, Joel, where is Joel? He's making his way in. Is he going to get on the jet ski? One minute remaining. Has he, has he thrown the towel in? Looks like he's going to leave it on that last wave. Yeah. Medina's stepdad, Charles, already ready with the hat and shades just in case Medina holds this one out. Looking at the numbers, it's really tight. Well, and Parco is going to let it die. We'll see what the judges think. He won't need the shades. The sun's gone. <laughs> it's a beautiful afternoon here at Snapper Rocks. But wow, what a change around. Gabriel Medina, his last two rides, an 8.5, 7.83, has turned the tables on Joel Parkinson, who kicked things off for the 9.0. was an ominous start for... Uh, Gabriel Medina, but 40's way back. Probably the best one we've seen so far today. Well, Potts, the panel, still taking their time with Joel Parkinson's last wave as they check out the replay. Numbers are now dropping, and it's not going to be close to a 7.33. It's a 5.10. 
Gabriel Medina is going to watch the clock run out with an 8.5 and a 7.83 as he's going to take the Quicksilver Pro here in 2014 and start off the season world number one. Well, there we have it, Gabriel Medina, and this is just a bit of a victory lap here for the young Brazilian. There is your champion, Joey, and what a way to do it. He doesn't really know yet. He's waited for it, and now he realizes. And, uh, well, have a look at that. Let's just sit back and listen. Gabriel Medina now living one of the biggest victories of his young career. The superstar from Brazil is the first Brazilian to take the Quicksilver Pro and now leads the ratings heading into the second stop at Margaret River. Wow. Incredible stuff. And it's, uh, it hasn't quite sunk in yet. Gabriel Medina trying to come to grips with the fact that he is the 2014 champion. And what a way to do it. His last two rides. An epic day of surfing and finishes. It come, came down to the wire. And he's done that time and time again here. He did it against McFanning. He did it against Taj Burrow. And now he's done it against Joel Parkinson. The screams continue. First led by his stepdad, Charles, will meet him at the water's edge. And Medina, you can see the reaction on his final wave. He was in disbelief, probably anticipating the number from Joel Parkinson's answer back. He'll take $100,000 as we see those last couple of waves ridden from Medina that made the difference. Didn't try to attempt to surf behind the rock like Parker was, and he was effective with an 8.5 and a 7.83 back to back to take this victory. You know, he listened to his gut feeling. He, he knew what he had to do, Joey. He stuck to his guns. You know, he, he, he's dic Joel dictated the beginning of that heat. Gabriel kind of fell into, you know, fell into his sort of game plan. And uh, Gabriel Medina went back to his guns and uh, there he is. Motions running high for Gabriel Medina starting off into this event. World number 15 taking on the number three seed. We saw a lot of early upsets from the guys that you're putting as world title contenders. And now all the focus will be on the young superstar representing Sao Paulo. We've been talking about when we'd see a Brazilian world champion. It's kind of been in Adriano's court for the last couple of seasons. And now for the first time in Medina's career, he's sitting at the top of the ratings with a whole year ahead of him to be the guy to beat. Yeah, you know, he can't let things get too far ahead. He can't get too far ahead of himself, you know. Uh, it is a long race ahead of him. He's got some some of the world's best right behind him, Joey. Um, Joel Parkinson in second spot. You know, you've got D'Souza, Fanning, Slater all right there. You know, he's got to take it in his stride. He's got to enjoy this moment for sure. But, you know, it is a, it is a marathon and not a sprint. And the crowd goes crazy. As you can tell, the Brazilian contingent alive and well here in Coolangatta. It's been a long time between drinks for Gabriel Medina. The last victory he had was over Joel Parkinson as he's undefeated in the final series against Parko in his young career. Spent a whole other year on tour without a victory. Felt like he was robbed in Portugal against Julian Wilson. And now we're seeing him let go a lot of emotion. Scenes here at Snapper Rocks and, a, and an emotional Gabriel Medina. Tell you what, Joel, well, what would Joel be thinking, Joey? He uh, thought he had it in the bag, really, didn't he? And you can never underestimate, and that's the beauty about our sport. It's, it's strange things happen, and Medina came back, never gave up. His last two scoring rides were the difference. Well, Parker had the perfect start, the nine point ride, which still is the best wave of the final. That was his opener. He was that dominant through the semifinals and quarters. 
It looked like he was the guy to beat. The underdog, Medina, coming into that one with his back against the wall, returns the title to the Goofy Foots since 2004, showing that Goofy Footers are not at a disadvantage any longer at Snapper Rocks. Not anymore, Joey, not anymore. And he took down some pretty incredible guys. You know? Started with Mick Fanning. Uh, started with Ace Bucken, really, on the backhand, then took down Mick Fanning, then took down Taj Burrow, and then Joel Parkinson. Talk about taking down some big guns out here at Snapper. So heavy security guiding Medina up to the podium as he's letting go of all the emotion. A long way to go for a long waiting period starting back at March 1st, second to the last day of the waiting period, and a heavy finals day for the superstar. It's taking a little bit of time before he's going to be hammered by the press. What a crazy feeling for Medina to feel this number one moment for the first time. Uh, we see Rosie. I'm sure we're going to get a chat with, uh, have a chat with uh, Gabriel Medina here very shortly. Great scenes here at Snapper Rocks. What a way to finish off. <laughs> in a pretty epic fashion, Medina just starting to slow down. And we'll be set up with him in just a moment. An 8-5 and a 7-8-3 back-to-back to upset the hometown hero. Gets a big hug from his team manager, Ryan Fletcher. And the celebrations will continue. He's got a couple of weeks to think about number one heading into Margaret River. Jadson Andre, another Brazilian goofy foot who kind of felt the pressure of lifting up that Brazilian game to the top of the ratings. And now they're going to focus on Medina for the rest of the season. Thanks, guys. A very emotional Gabriel Medina with one of the biggest comebacks we've seen, I think, in surfing history. Gabriel, you look overcome with emotions. Just ex describe to me how you're feeling right now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I don't know what to say, you know, like, I told you guys before, God was on my side. And, uh, yeah, I've been talking to my mom and God as well. And I don't know, it's just a lot of training, a lot of things happen. You know, I had my, my broke leg in the end of last year. And yeah, I just felt really good, you know, especially um, a final against Parko, uh, who is a guy who I ever looked after to, I don't know, to copy his style or something, you know. And I really respect these guys that I beat today. Uh, I think that was the best day of my life for sure. And Paco dropped that nine, and then he broke his board. Do you feel like that was the turning point in the heat for you? Actually, uh, before I got the, the eight, uh, I, was, I thought I was going to lose again, you know? And then, I know I got that one was really good down there. And uh, I thought, like, Paco had one really good one, a nine, and, and then a seven. If I, like, get two eights, I could be there, you know? And then I had kind of this math, and kind of work it and uh, I don't know like I don't know what did I do you know like it's I would never imagine this moment and you're the first you're the first goofy footer to win this event since 2004 you must be pretty proud right now yes that that made me proud of me you know of myself and uh, I did it for every goofy you know like um, I always uh, watch it Oki, Tom Carroll all these legends you know like and now we have CJ, uh, Freddy, Miggy, everyone. And uh, I think everyone was wishing that, you know, a good footage to win here and uh, do it for the boys. <laughs> and with so many Brazilians, have a huge crowd, a lot of support for you. How are you going to celebrate this one? In English? Pushies. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to celebrate, I don't know. I haven't think about it, but. Um, Maybe I go a dinner with my friends, um, hanging out, and um, that's it. I have to wait for the next one, you know, Margaret. So I will be around. Yeah. Right, well, well, congratulations, Gabriel, and we're going to take it back to Joe. Thanks a lot, Rosie. Epic performance from Gabriel Medina, taking down a lot of the legends of our sport and the local boys, Mick Fanning, Taj Burrow, and Joel Parkinson, when it mattered the most spots. You know, what a way to do it, you know, and I've always said, if you're going to win a contest, you've got to beat the best. It's going to be that hollow victory if it doesn't. 
and he took down some of the best surfers ever here at Snapper Rocks. Three guys that have kind of had a real stranglehold on this event, so good on him. History made here in 2014. Gabriel Medina takes it for the Quicksilver Pro, and Stephanie Gilmore back to number one in the world. We'll take a short break. We'll wrap up this entire event right after this. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.